Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Join us as we listen to this edifying teaching from the stable of the Youth Fellowship, Kerubim and Seraphim Women Church, Ayonir. To register our bell with our branch, Onikoko, to pray as we listen, may your mind be renewed and transformed in Jesus' name. Lord, I don't go show at your journey, tell you, tell you. Oba, I don't know what any call it, Naduro. Oh, Lord, I don't sorrow, tell me, call it, ye father. Oba, I don't buy, tell me, call it, ye. Oh, Lord, I don't ye, tell me, call it, pa. I ran Latin, Paggy, Lori, Naru. Oba, I show you, baby, I tell you, I fool ye, my shape. I will warn in Lorum. Oh, what can be Rebida? Oh, call Buba Wombo. Baba, I lie, me Baba. Oh, about to double one, want to forty. Oh, Lorum to double one, want to ring on. Oh, about to double one, want it. Oh, Lorum to double one, want to burn on. Oh, Lorum to double one, want it. Oh, about to down to phone in my bar. Olorun to da gbogbo awon aro oba to da won te yara won pe olorun to da gbogbo awon olowo oba to da gbogbo awon talaka oba to da gbogbo eniyan to kuru olorun to da gbogbo eniyan to ga oba to da gbogbo eniyan to sanra olorun to da gbogbo eniyan to gbe oba to da gbogbo eniyan to pupa olorun to da gbogbo eniyan to duro oba ti okun ri ti okun sa olorun ti jo dani ri to pada seyin I won't kill I won't for be a go. I won't get it if you're a dragon. Oh, Lord, to be man upon the agent of good your do. Oh, but to roll your power, but you won't be a friend. Oh, Lord, to moment you know, but I want. Oh, but to pound more by la barra. Oh, Lord, to pound more by looking key. Oh, Lord, to one more rolling in Belua than you already want. One fear day one little bone lay a latte go go last year, barra. Oh, but to down one Kerubu Lone, you're very. Oh, down one Seraphu Lone, you're mefa. Olorun to da won kerugo lo lori kan ere si berin o da won si rafu lo lori kan ere si ototo Olorun to da won kerugo to ju won be ninu keke se won o da won si rafu o ju won be ni gbogbo ara won Olorun to da won kerugo to fori won se bujoko Olorun ti awon si rafu ti won yin losun ati ni oro oba ta o le yin tan oba ta o le pe tan oba ta o le sapejuwe re Olorun ti ai ohun re o koja aye ati orun alagbara eleru ni yi Eni yano oba ye raje kabi osi oba bubu anwori lede aweri omo dake dake olube ja omo olukon oba bubu anwobo baba lai ni baba olube iti ayati oron oba ti bubu oron bo oba ti bubu aye nyi apatan la ti o shi fori so eni ba sori so okon king of kings the lord of lords i am that i am the ancient of days beginning and the end of all things the one and the finish of our faith we exalt your name above the heaven and the earth and father accept our praises in the name of jesus father we ask that in a way and manner we have never experienced you before in this tabernacle father manifest yourself in the name of jesus in a way and manner that the heaven and the earth will be able to establish that truly we serve a living God. Father, manifest yourself in the name of Jesus. So that we'll come back here next week with an outstanding testimony. Father, manifest yourself in the name of Jesus. Let your name be exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of the heart of your people be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Shout a bigger amen. I believe you can do better. Shout a bigger amen. amen. I believe you can do better. Shout a bigger amen. amen. Give God a clap offering. Appreciate this.
Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I pray for you. I pray for you. Your destiny will break forth. In the name of Jesus. Your destiny will speak forth. In the name of Jesus. Your destiny will be fulfilled before your own eyes. In the mighty name of Jesus. For everyone that has promised that your destiny will not be fulfilled. There will be a stepping stone to your greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing will stop your destiny. Nothing will stop your dreams. Nothing will stop your visions. Nothing will stop your greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that the heaven has penciled down about your life. They are manifesting now. In the name of Jesus. Something is going to happen today. Something will happen. Amen. Amen. Something will happen. Some of you, before we finish this service, go and write it down. You are going to see your future clearly before your own eyes. Oh, you know, Rehabi, don't worry. Before we finish this service, before your own eyes, you will see your you will feel your future clearly in the name of Jesus. I see that happening in this service. Let me see Come and share a little. Come and share. Amen. It is never the plan of God for his children to live a wasted life. Mm -mm. It's never the plan. And that is why when you go through the scripture, God, God keep giving a second chance. We saw that in the life of uh King Saul. He messed up the first time. He messed up the second time. Because God is waiting that look, your life, your destiny needs to be fulfilled. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You had accident this year. Where are you? You had one accident this year. Where are you? What the accident you cannot do it. Where are you? Don't be ashamed. You have had accident this year. And no was okay. Oh Amen. That reason why the enemy has decided to take your life will be fulfilled before your own eyes. In the name of Jesus. Because the devil actually planned to take some people by accident so that their destiny will not be fulfilled this year. And we see God saying that that destiny needs to be fulfilled. Nothing will stop you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Something is burning inside of you. And I pray that God will help me today in the name of Jesus. All right. Last week we talked about the fervent youth. And we only focus on the word youth. And by the grace of God, today we are going to be discussing the fervency part of it. The fervency part of that scripture, we are going to be discussing it today. So we are trusting that God is going to open our eyes of understanding in the name of Jesus. Now, in scriptural terms, the word fervency is not what we think. Many times when they want you to want to pay a parvo, be paid we pay a dry tara abi. And you know our parvo, you are able to realize that God doesn't answer prayer by shouting. Amen. As a matter of fact, sometimes it can be an embarrassment when you are shouting to God in prayer. Should I repeat that? It can be what? It can be an embarrassment at times when you are shouting and you say you are praying to God. It can be embarrassing before God. As a matter of fact, it can be an insult. Are you with me? Let me explain this. Now. When you need something from your father, you ask. Is that not the truth? Daddy, I need this. Now, can you command your father and say, Daddy, I command, give me that money. Or can you be asking for money from your daddy and you are shouting at me, Daddy, give me that money. The IRS is a prayer that we don't understand. When you need something from your father, you ask. And that is why prayer is actually communication between you and who? And your father. But when it comes to dealing with the enemies of your father, you can shout. When it comes to dealing with the enemies of your father, you can command. Because the Bible says we are sons. Anybody that happens to be an enemy of God is our enemy. So we can use commandments. I command this sickness to leave. Devil, get 
behind me. Are you with me? But when it comes to asking, Daddy, I need you communicate. But many a time we are asking God and we are shouting, Daddy, give. Ah. Amen. So far, mercy is not shouting the way they tell us. Amen. Can we have Colossians chapter 4, verse 12 on the screen? Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Can we have that on the screen so that we can use it to explain it? To explain the word fervency. If you don't understand the word fervency, you might not get the message. So we need to understand that word fervency. Can we have it on the screen? Can you switch? Fervency. Now, we have seen so many places that the scripture talks about the word fervency. But what it means is a different thing entirely. Colossians 4 12. Talo Rikobawaka. Colossians 4 12. Colossians 4 12. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. Who is one of you? Epaphras, who is one of you? And a servant of Christ Jesus. A servant of Christ Jesus. Sent greetings. Sent greetings. He's always wrestling in prayer for you. He's always what? Wrestling in prayer for you. He's always what? Wrestling in prayer for you. Can you see that word now? That's another version. Now, the word prayer, the word fervency simply means persistency. Epaphras is persistent in prayer towards you. Consistency. Ability to continue without giving up. The ability to hold on to a particular task without saying no until there is a result. That is what is called fervency. The ability to say, I am for Jesus and nothing will take Jesus away from me. Irrespective of what I'm going through, I will continue my work with God. Fervency. Are you with me now? I have said that in the next 10 years, I am going to bring the greatest management consultant in Nigeria and I will be persistent towards that goal until it is fulfilled. Irrespective of what comes my way, I will not give up. Fervency. Are you with me? Because lack of fervency is actually our problem. So we walk with God for a while and we give up. Because many a time, every one of us are seated there, many a time we have a particular reason why we are walking with God. And many a time, our reasons are actually expectations. I am trusting God that in the next three years, God will give me a man. I'm trusting God that in the next two years, God will give me a good woman. I'm trusting God that in the next five years, God is going to give me a car. Many a time, we have reasons why we are working with God. But we have failed to realize that working with God ought to be a natural thing in every man that is born of God. Either it's not giving me a house, I'm working with God. It's not giving me a car, I'm working with God. It's not even answering my prayer, I'm still working with Him. That is what is called fervency. Are we on the same page? Amen. Ability to continue irrespective of what I am going through. That is what we call fervency. Amen. So, if we are going to relate it to what we studied last week, when we talk about that there is capacity on our inside, we have the good days when the evil days has not come. Now we can dream. We have the capacity to do all things now. Now, ability to continue in those things without keeping up until Christ comes is what we call fervency. So it's not shouting. It's not making noise. In fact, it's not zeal. Because somebody can have zeal without knowledge. It's not zeal. But persistency. Father, we are on the same page. And nothing will take me out of this page. No tribulation, no sickness, no death, no life, no things to come, nothing that are past. I am still with you. We are together. Amen. And not until as youth, not until we are fervent in the journey of life, not until we are persistent. They are extended to have big visions, great dreams, and at the end of the day, they are not being fulfilled. They are extended. Many of you, some couple of years back, you have penciled some certain things down. And today, when you remember, you say, Nigba Connie. And that's why you see people. One master, one other way. Ah, Nigba Tawai in Lulu. Nigba Tawai in Connie. Nigba Tawai in Shewasu. Have you not heard people say that? Why are they not doing it again? 
Why are they not doing it again? In fact, some people will give him the same way. Ah, Nibba Tala by any corny. But the man is not singing anymore. What happened? Your story will not be a thing of the past in the name of Jesus. Many people, their greatness has become a thing of the past. We have had men of God in this nation that their name has rang bell. But today, they, are, they were nowhere to be found. What happened to them? Lack of persistence. Amen. I pray God will grant you that grace in the name of Jesus. So we are talking about persistence. Youth that are persistent in their visions of life. Youth that are persistent in their dreams. Youth that are persistent in their work with God. Now, there are things you don't do in life temporarily. There are things you do in life eternally. Your work with God should be an eternal thing. It's not something you do for a while. Amen. It's not something you do for a while. Praying should be an eternal thing. It's not something you do for The Bible says, Luke chapter 18. He said, and he told them a parable so that they will understand that men ought to pray without ceasing. Men ought to pray without stopping. Men ought to pray continually. So it's not praying in the morning and praying after two, three days and all of that. A continual thing. So there are things as well that we need to do consistently. Because a time is coming, you will not be able to do them anymore. Your work with God, your prayer, pursuing your vision and your dream and all those things, all those things should be a continual thing. Are you with me now? But many a time, that strength is not on our inside. But I pray that God will grant us the strength in the name of Jesus. Now, but today, this is where I'm going. I want us to look at together, I want us to look at the key to be consistent in life. They are keys. I'm not coming here to talk about determination. Uh, you must be determined. Mm -mm. You must be disciplined. Forget about those two. Practical keys that you need for you to be consistent in the journey of life. In your dreams, in your vision, in your work with God, in your prayer life. There are keys that you need if you are going to be consistent. If you are going to be persistent. If you are going to continue. If you are not going to give up. There are keys. Practical keys. When you say being determined, yes, it's good to be determined. But you can be determined. And at the same time, things are not happening. Are you with me now? After some people determine that they will not eat, they will not drink until Saul is dead. Abby, what would happen if they did not kill Saul in six months? Would they still not eat? Abby, would they not eat? They will even die before the man now. Eh, so it's not all about being determined. Let's look at practical keys together. Now, Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28. We don't need to read. Jeremiah 1 from verse 4. Act 9 from verse 10. Nehemiah 2 from verse 4. Now, look at this now. Now, not until a man understands his purpose of existence, being persistent will be a difficult thing. Not in, until a man understands his purpose of existence, being persistent in life will be a difficult thing. Every man is created with a specific purpose. There is no man that God created for creating's sake. No. Allah Uncle Dami is a big lie. For every man that God created, God created with a specific purpose. Now, when you look at Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, the Bible talks about general purpose of creation. And God said, come, let us create man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the earth, the best of the earth, over, every, over everything that crippled upon the earth. And God created man in his image. In his image, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God said, be fruitful and multiply, replenish, take dominion, and all of those stuff. They are general. Everybody. Everybody is created in the image of God. In order that we all carry the spirit of God. Everybody is created in the likeness of God. We all reason and think like God. Everybody has the capacity, you know, to be fruitful, to multiply. It's general, everybody. But as an individual, there is a specific purpose that God created us for. That's just the truth. What determines how God creates a man is the purpose upon the life of a man. 
That is why you are created with different shape, different eyeball, different color, different L, and all of those stuff. Because your purpose of creation determines the way you are created. That's why some people they are tall and some people they are short. I hope you know that. Go and study the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4. Well, chapter 1 from before. God said, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before I formed, not before you were born, not before you grew, but before I formed you in your mother's womb, I have known you already. So, does that mean Jeremiah was existing somewhere before in the womb? No. In other words, what God is saying is, I have determined what you are going to become in life before I decided to form you. So, I form you based on what I have destined you to become. I formed you in the womb based on what I have destined that you are going to become in life. That's why I said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Are you with me now? Romans chapter 9. The scripture says that even Isaac, and Rebecca, when they were with child, before the children were born, having done any evil or good, God said, I love Jacob and I hate Jesus. And the scripture says, so that the plan of God by divine election can be fulfilled. They were not born. But God has determined before they are forming in the womb that Jacob will be the head, Esau will be the tail, but Esau will come first before they were formed. So if somebody look at you and say, You are not good enough, the person is lying. Because what God planned for you determines the way you are. That's why you see me big and tall. And that's why you see this man is not as big as I am. Different purpose of existence. Are you with me now? And not until when a man discovers his purpose of existence, a man will be walking everywhere. What did I say? You what? You walk everywhere, you go everywhere, you do everything, you will learn from everything, and there will be no success at the end of the day. Because you are just living your life the way it comes, you don't understand why you are alive. Everybody is alive for a particular reason. Amen. Jeremiah said, God, I'm a little boy. God said, shut up. You are a prophet. That's what I created you for. Why Paul was writing to the Galatians? He said, ah, to God be the glory that has set me aside from my mother's womb to be an apostle to the Gentiles right from the womb. So you need to know why are you existing? Why has God created you? And God created us to serve him. That is general. Are you with me? God created us to come to church. It's for everybody. And God created us to praise him, to pray to him, to worship him. It's for everybody. You, Oluwaji, why as a person? Are you with me now? And that's why somebody is singing, you are having the person. You as a what has God created you for? Somebody is speaking in the for one hour, you are angry. What is your problem? Why has God created you? When you discover your purpose of creation and you are living in purpose, somebody will also envy you as well. Are you with me? Understand this. But many times we don't know. We just wake up in the morning, they call, you just go anywhere, you do anything, you just... Okay. No. Life is not like that. The only way for you to be passing is that I know the reason why I am born. I know why I am existing. I know why I am in Abel Kota. And I will follow it because you know. If you don't know, then what will you do? That is where our problem is. We don't know. Amen. Some of you are studying mercy. Some of you are studying microbiology. Some of you are studying mass commander. And at the end of the day, those certificates, you will keep it on the bed. Do you know the reason why? Who will look on mass come to people fine? At the end of the day, mass come will be useless in your ministry, in your journey. So you'll be wondering, pick it while not she in school. Amen. Have you ever asked why people get out of school and there is no job? You know, many a time you keep thinking that it's because the government is not creating job. Are you with me now? If God has not destined you to be a pharmacist, what it means that in the agenda of God for your life. If you study pharmacies, there won't be job for you now. Don't you know? It's not on the it's not on, on God's agenda for your life. In other words, what it means is that you have missed the roadmap. You are lost. You are lost. 
And when a man is lost, not until a man gets back on the road, he will continue to go everywhere. You will not be lost in Jesus' name. I was talking to somebody, a medical doctor, finished in the University of Lagos in 1987. The overall best student in the University of Lagos is a medical doctor. And when we spoke at length, he said, I die no, I will have stopped being at me. He said, if I have known, I will have stopped business administration. I will not have wasted my time studying medicine. What is your purpose of existence? Joseph said to his brother, for this purpose, God created me so that I can come to Egypt to preserve what? Lives. He understood. Paul said, God that has set me aside as an apostle to the Gentiles, he knows precisely. And that's why when he was preaching to the Jews at some point, and they have been adamant, he said, don't worry. I will leave you, I will turn to the Gentiles. And he faced the Gentiles squarely. Because he knows. Have you ever seen Peter going to the Gentiles except when God said, go to the house of Colinius? Because Peter understood that his assignment is to the people of Israel and not to the Gentiles. So he has no business with them. Understand the purpose of existence. But many times we don't even know. Amen. And when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. That's why we abuse our lives. Because we don't know why. That's why we abuse our lives. That's why we smoke, that's why we drink, that's why we prostitute, that's why we do all those things. Because we, because we don't even know. We only know we are existing. But why we don't know? Amen. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. You need to understand purpose of existence so that you can stay focused. You can be persistent in pursuing it until you achieve it. But many times we don't know. That's number one problem. Number two. Understanding your purpose of existence is not good enough. But believing in your purpose of existence. Believing in your purpose of existence. You might know. But if you don't believe it, you cannot live it. If you don't believe it, you cannot what? You cannot live it. Many a time, the reason why we get tired along the way is because we don't have the capacity to believe it anymore. It's not looking real. It's not looking real anymore. And we decide to go back. Are you with me? Twelve spies. Go and survey the land of Canaan. Go and see for yourself. And the Bible says, when they got there, they say, oh, truly the land is flowing with milk and honey. In fact, this is the fruit of the land. But we saw the descendant of Anak there. They are the descendant of giants. We cannot what? We cannot go. It's no more, it's no more possible. It's no more visible. What God is saying, I, we don't think it's real anymore. Let's go back to Egypt. Ten out of twelve. And the Bible says, and they brought a bad report to the entire congregation. And the congregation weep and said, Moses, let's go back to Egypt. They don't believe in the vision anymore. They don't believe the dream anymore because it's not looking real anymore. God said we are going to meet, you know. God never told us that there will be giants there. God only said the land is flowing with milk and what and honey. But now we saw giants. We don't believe in this vision anymore. Let's go back to Egypt. And guess what? All of them that did not believe it did not see Canaan. All of them that did not be, did not what? They did not seek enough. So that's why I said, understand the purpose is not enough, but believe in the purpose. Even when it is not looking real, believe it. God has said to that a time is coming when you stand on the pulpit and you are ministering, dead bodies will rise. When you stand, you are just ministering, you are not praying, lame will walk. When you stand, you are just ministering, you know, you are not praying, you are not, demons will leave. And you have been ministering for 15, 20 years. Are you with me now? 
ordinary headache has not gone under your ministration. And you'll be like, it's not real. It's real. Time and chances happens to them all. The race is not to the swift. Bread is not for men of wisdom. Riches is not to men of understanding. Favor is not to men of skills. But time and chance is happens to there is a specific time of, you know, for the manifestation of those things. You will have to wait. Continue to believe it. Why did I say? Continue to what? Continue to believe. While you are pursuing it, you are trusting God, you are pressing on. And I say, God, I am pressing on. I am pressing on. I know and I trust that you have the capacity to fulfill it. Irrespective of what happened. Believe that vision. Amen. If God has said you are going to rule Nigeria, don't worry. Believe it. One day it will manifest. Joseph was 17 when God told him, you will rule nations. Your father, your mother, your brothers will bow to you. At 18, Joseph was in slavery. Are you with me? At about 25, 26, the man was in prison. Abby? But he keeps what? He keeps believing in that vision that God has said it. I will pursue it. Nothing will stop it until it comes to pass. And one day, the king located him. And the vision was fulfilled before he knew his own eyes. It was like a dream. Are you with me? So in other words, it took 13 years from the day of the vision to the day of manifestation. 13 whole years. That of David, 13 whole years. We saw Jesus at 12. We didn't see him until when he was dead. You have to keep believing. Believe it. Don't give up. That's what we call persistency. When you believe your vision, it will become a driving force to carry on. A driving force to carry on. A driving force to carry on. You will continue to carry on. Are you with me? Even when there is no money, you are trusting God. Even on the sick bed, you are trusting God. Even when the entire world became your enemy, you are still trusting God. Continue to believe. That is what we call persistence. Amen. I pray God is helping us in Jesus' name. Number three. Now, if you will be persistent in life towards your vision, your goal, your future, towards your work with God, you need to, you need to do what I call keeping the company of great minds. Keeping the company of great minds. Many a time, the company you keep will determine how far you can go in life. The company you keep will determine how far you can go in life. You need people that we call value others. People that can add value to your life. Not people that will drain value out of your life and you are getting dry. There are people, all they do is to drain the value out of your own life. And you, you don't have value again. But there are companies you need to keep if you are going to carry on in life. Act of Apostles chapter 18, 4 and 5. Act of Apostles chapter 4 and 5. If I can see Amplified version, I will appreciate it. If I can see Amplified. Act of Apostles 18, 4 and 5. Now, even Paul the Apostle, we are looking at Paul to be a great apostle. At some point, he needs people to carry on in life. At some point, he needs people in his life so that he can carry on. At some point in life. Amen. Is it on the screen? Now, look at this now. 4. Now look at it. But he discussed and argued in synagogue every Sabbath and won over both Jews and Greeks. Continue. The next one. Now look at it now. By the time Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was completely engrossed with the preaching, earnestly arguing and testifying to the Jews that Jesus is Lord. Was he saying that before? He was not saying that before. But when he saw Silas and Timothy, the strength came and said, hey, my companion has come. Ebo Jesu Loluwa. 
You meet people like that in your life. Initially, he was arguing. He was arguing. But when he saw great mind around him, he said, Jesus is Lord. You need people around you. You need great minds around you. People that when you are going there, they will say, brother, you still have to say, come on. Not people that when you tell them that, look, in the next five years, in the next five years, I'm going to be buying Panocean Oil Corporation. Nothing will stop me. And they will say, all right, I know you shame me. And you are demoralized. Amen. Those are the kind of people we have around us. When you tell them that I will not be married until the capital base of my business is 12 billion US dollar. And they'll come and say, Ah, or do not do only Emma to Shelley. What about what that will go? Is that the people you are working with? You need people that when you say that in the next 10 years, my business is going to be this, and they are saying that already oh, that is too small, you can do more than that. Those are the people you need. Papa David will say that when I call my wife, that look, there we are fasting for 21 days. My wife will say, Daddy, why not let's make it 40? Those are the people you need. Are you with me? You are saying that, look, I, I'm just praying, I'm trusting God that I'll, I'll, great, I'll graduate with the two one. And they say, No. Ah. Sister, why are you saying that now? You can, I know who you are. You can make a first class. Those are the people you need. Not that when you say you are graduating with two, they will say, ah, two, one. Ah, which one are you going to two? Are those one human beings? Those are the people we are moving with. Are you with me now? You are telling somebody that, look, before I get married, I will ensure that I am financially buoyant enough to manage my family, and they are telling you that, uh, well, think about marriage, I'm going to call a long man, she will get married, no? What kind of people are that? And those are the people who keep us friends. When you wake up in the morning, you say, man, today I'll pray for about 45 minutes. I'll say, 45? Ah, what if I do a gun? What if you do? And you yourself, you are thinking that you are praying 45 minutes. But by the way, one day, the man was boasting. The man was boasting one day that, yes, he prayed for, I think he prayed for 33 days. I said, yes, I was boasting that I prayed for 33 days. Not until one day I had the news of a man that prayed for three months. And I said, ah, I've not prayed at all. That's the way life is. For every height, there is a greater one. For every height, there is what? A greater one. So you need people that can help you to a greater height. Not people that will pull you down. Are you with me now? If you are the greatest in the company of people they are working together with, you have a problem. Oh? You have a problem, a serious one. At 25, everybody around you, you are the one discipling them. You don't have anybody above you. You have a problem. Because they will drain you finish very soon. They will finish you. Get people of great mind. Mooks with them. Are you with me? 95% of my friends, there are people that are older than me with at least 10 years. 10 years. That's just the truth. Are you with me? Not that I'll, I'll, I'll be moving with people that are. Ah, no, 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 no. It's not pride. It shows you know what you are doing and you know where you are going. When they have problems, they bring it to you. You don't have anybody you can take your own problem to. You have a challenge and then the circle of people you keep, nobody can provide at least oral solution. And what kind of friend are you keeping? You need people of great mind in your company if you are going to go far in life. If you are going to see those dreams for few, you need them. Because at the point you are likely to be discouraged. But you need people that can pull you up. Even Jesus at a point. And that's one, that's one of the reasons why Jesus had a greater problem. You know, at the point, Jesus said, my soul is exceedingly, you know, exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Are you with me now? Nobody could encourage him. Even the disciples that he took to the mountain, to so encourage him. What were they doing? They were sleeping. They were sleeping. And Jesus was angry. Yeah? That you put even watch for one hour. He went and came back. They were still sleeping. Don't go and keep those kind of friends. Otherwise, you have a problem. Amen. God is helping us in Jesus. Let me talk about number four. Number four. 
If you are going to be persistent in life, your goal, your vision, the future. Are you with me now? You need to build yourself to a point of relevance. You need to build yourself to a point of relevance. A point that everybody will look towards you and they will say, we need you. You need to get to that point. When you get to that point, they won't be going back. If you, if you want to go back, people that will need you will not let you go back. Amen. And building up yourself to a point of relevance is done in the secret place. It's not in the open. Amen. Genesis, uh, uh, 4 Samuel chapter 17. David was in the bush. He was keeping the father's flock. And he was building his capacity. In secret place. Nobody knows him. He was just somewhere. Building himself up. Building himself up. Until he got to a state that is what is relevant to the entire nation of Israel. And when the army of the Philistines was disturbing them, he came and said, don't worry sir. I won't do it. And they said, you are just a little boy. He said, sir, you don't understand. In my secret place, when I was building my capacity to this level, when I see the bear, I do something. When I see the lion, I do something. The bear and the lion, they have no sense. This one is a man, he has sense. I can deal with him. But he did that in the secret place, not in the open. Build your capacity. Don't be a novice. Don't be an ignorance. Build up capacities. Amen. What makes men need you is the capacity inside of you. If there are no, if there are no relevance on your inside, nobody will look for you. More, well, not even more. They're not here. Go think I can't make more need. Are you with me at all? They can't remember if there are no relevance on your inside. Every one of you, you call Pastor Shekou Michael. On Monday, you call him. All churches, they are calling Why do you think they are calling him? He has built himself to a level that is relevant anywhere. So they need him. So even if he decide that this month I want to sleep, they will not let him sleep. Are you with me now? People like Baba Deboe, Samadhi, Yemi Boy, and the rest of them. If you are going to need them for someone in December, and you are bringing your information this June, it's late already. It's late. If you need them this year, give them invitation last year. Because they have built themselves to a point that everybody needs them. They want to see them. Build yourself to that level. In your field of study, build yourself to that level. Amen. If you are an accountant, Build yourself to that level that everybody knows that when it comes to financial problem, you can solve it. In your secret place, they will look for you. Men look for people of relevance. They don't just look for people anyhow. Amen. I was telling my son one day, I said, look, don't go and study a course that you'll be looking for a job. Study a course that a job will be looking for you. There are courses that when you study, oh mama, why? They are level that when you build yourself to, people will be consulting. Hey, job, more when it only she buy, more when it only she buy. Then they will not say we know of one boy somewhere. Are you with me? David built his relevant not only in fighting battle, even when it comes to playing guilt. Are you aware of that? When the spirit of madness came upon Saul, a servant advised Saul. Saul said, "Get me one." They said, "We know one. He's the son of Jesse. Each time he's playing strings." Demons will leave. He said, Go and get him for me. Go and what? Go and get him for me. It's all strings. It's all this one that you are playing and people are dancing. When he's playing his own, demons will run. Are you with me at all? They said, Go and get, go and get me that one. We need a man that can interpret this ring. All the astrologers of the king, they could not. All the wise men, the magicians, they could not. And the copy are coming and say, Sir, more in your camp, but you have to one lower. I know of one man, he can do that. Relevance. When you get to that level, anywhere you are, they will look for you. Are you with me? Get to that level. That's where our problem is. When you get to that level, you don't have problem. I told us. You don't look for money. You look for relevance and value. When you get it, money will come naturally without praying. 
without praying. Go je konu wa fun mi lo Olorun ki fun yan lowo. God give you value, give you relevance. Then money will come after. But when we are praying so lo wa fun mi lo fun mi lo ibo lo choro we ja wala ton ni. No. Build yourselves. Amen. I pray God will help us in this generation in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, what is it that you are holding? What is it that you are what is that dream? Build yourself to a point. When they look for ministers in the sea and say, we know who they call. They build themselves to a level. And that's why they are calling them. See, they are pastors with color. Are you with me? TV or this thing for one invitation, Cory. Call that they were alone. Say we we don't wear color. Have you ever seen with the color? So many pastors in this church, you don't see color. But they call them here and there. Why? Relevance. And we have seen people with color. And we have shown land la actual bara. Color or rich rich and all of that. Or the people man joke or see one cool be. The one if you all know she was in fact sorrow. Amen. Relevance. Build yourself. It's done in the secret place. Get to that level. This is not time to look for money. It's time to look for value that you can add to people's life. It's time to look for relevance that you can give out. In exchange, money will come. Amen. Everybody is talking about Alashi Yori Abikilevan, which is Alashi Yori Ninja Abibeko. He got to a level. She is not singing because of money. But because she has something she can give out, money is now coming. The first day she's going to minister. They gave her 10,000 and she was shocked. Mommy only shared you man only more than 10,000. Why? Any time I witness 100,000, Amen. Men look for they look for people of value. Build yourself. When you get a particular life inside that move my arrest, I want you one to rest man. Because you have built yourself to a particular level. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Number five. Now I agreed that at some point men can be weary. Men can be tired. Men can be discouraged. It's very true. Yes or no? Isaiah chapter 40, 28, 29, 30, 31. The Bible says, even the youth will faint. Abi, in other words, they will not have strength to carry on. That even the youth, that we thought, we trust God that they will have strength, that at some point they will faint. They will not be able to continue. First King chapter 19. Elijah, Elijah said to God, God, kill me now. I can't continue again. Elijah, Elijah said that. He said, I am not better than my fathers. Take my life now. I am ready to go. It's possible. Jesus said the same thing. That God, I will that this thing can pass over. I cannot continue. I don't have the strength. So definitely, if people like Elijah and Jesus can get fed up, it can happen to you and I. I hope you know it can but there is something in Isaiah 40. All you need is to rest on the wings of the Holy Spirit. Point number five. Rest on the wings of the Holy Spirit. Those that waited upon the Lord, the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount all with wings like eagles. They will run. They will not be weary. Rest on the Holy Spirit. One can be very tired. There are some points you get to a point you are just, it's just as if you are alone. It's as if nothing is working. Are you with me now? Yes. It's as if you are praying and God is not answering. It's as if those people around you that you thought will help you, they cannot do anything. Then rest on the weeks on the ego. Rest on the Holy Spirit. Because at that point you need the Holy Spirit to help you. Jesus said, without me you cannot do anything. But he that abideth in me will produce that abides. 
will produce. So there are times you need to rest on the wings of the Holy Spirit to carry you because you don't have the strength. That's why the Bible said that the Spirit help our infirmity for we know not how to pray. But the Spirit pray for us in an agony that cannot be measured. Yes, it happens like that. Do you remember that when Peter was caught in the prison? I hope you know Peter wasn't praying. The Bible never said Peter was praying. The Bible said Peter was sleeping between four squares of soldiers. Where? It can get to that level in the journey of life. Are you with me now? When you get to that level, rest on the wings of the Holy Spirit. A man of God was serving under Apostle Suleiman. And at the point, the father in law came, just took the wife and said, Follow me, oh, you will not marry this man again. The man doesn't have money, no car, no house, nothing. The man is so poor. So the man became fed up and said, God, leave it all day. I hate this woman. The man just went to the mountain and he went to go and pray. He was also on the mountain, just trusting God, just praying. He could not do anything again. But while he was praying on the mountain, on the mountain while he was praying, he saw a particular president of a nation that was sick. And he saw that he lay hands on the man. The man was well. But he was praying. He has nobody. He's tired. He does not know the nation. He does not know the president. The president also saw in a dream a man of God in Nigeria that laid hands on him. They are now looking for a way to connect. The president sent men to Nigeria. They are going to search for a man by so 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 name. One wa ti 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 won ori. Nipa ti won tu wa lo sori oke to wa. They saw him. But when they saw him, he was not looking at the person that they announced. Do you know why? He was looking tat tat. And they just look and they say, "He walk on. We get away from here." They send him away. Why they want to snap on the mountain? The man was just passing by. Mistakenly, walk or capture you and no camera. And they went back to their nation. When they go to the nation, they were looking at the photograph. The man said, although this man is not, that man that is showing behind is the man I'm talking about. Go and fetch him. Amen. And the man and the DSS, or what did they call them? They have to appear on the matter and say, the president wants to see you. You can get tired at point. Then rest on the spirit of God. You need to learn it. There are times you wake up in the morning, praying becomes difficult. Oru call Jesus will live, Oru call Jesus, you can get to that level. Are you with me now? At that point, rest on the spirit of the living God. There are some of us when you want to rest on the spirit, the only thing you are doing is you are just you are just singing praises to God. You are just singing. You are just singing praises to God. You are just and while you are singing, something is happening in the spiritual realm. On your inside, something is coming, and the strength is just coming back. Some of you, the only thing you are just singing, you are just praying in tongue. Libra, answer, labor. You are just praying. And as you are praying, ah, something on your inside is just saying that. Yes. Something is going to happen now. Just rest. And something will just happen. Are you with me? Amen. You need to learn it. Don't let somebody come and say any day you don't pray. It's a crime. It's not a crime. It can get to that level. Are you with me? And the only thing you are just, you just look for, you are just singing hymns to God. Resting on the spirit of God. You are just singing to God. You are just praising His name. You are just speaking in tongues. You are just praying on the spirit. And before you know it, the heavens just take over and say, Yes, son, here is your strength. And before you know it, that's why the Bible says that pray with all prayers and supplication. Are you with me now? Even praying in the spirit. That is where our strength is. When you don't have direction of prayer anymore, that is where our strength is. There are times you have prayed all prayer points. Nothing is happening. Have you not experienced that? All prayer points you have prayed. Nothing. Uh -huh. Then rest on the spirit of God. Amen. Number six. Number six now. Hebrew chapter four. Verse 1, 3, and 7. Now, listen to me now. There is no amount of prayer that you will pray that can make things to happen. There is no amount of fasting that you can fast 
that will make things to happen. Are you with me now? There is no amount of counsel. There is no amount of strength you are putting that will make it happen. Everything you see in love happens by grace. By what? Grace. When you pray to God, God has the option either to answer or to neglect your prayer. God has the options. So if somebody has told you that, ah, the person is deceiving you. If I pray for you, God will decide either I want to answer or not. Are you with me now? If somebody has told you that all you need is ensure that you study at least five Christian Nobel in one month, you can study it, it's good. <laughs> but for something to happen, it's grace. Amen. By strength, no man shall prevail. Yes, we are going to walk. We are going to pursue. We are going to pray. We are going to walk with God. But we need the grace on the finished work of Christ on the cross for those things to manifest. We need that grace on that finished work for everything to come to manifestation. People have prayed more than you are praying. People have fasted more than you are fasting. People have gone to Bible school more than you have done. People have read the scripture from pali to pali more than you do, but nothing is still happening. Because the grace wasn't available for them. But when grace feeds on the life of a man, it looks as if he knows how to do that. Because grace is speaking. Are you with me now? Genesis chapter 28. Jacob ran away from all. This is a man that has just stolen his brother's blessing. A man that has stolen his brother's birthright. He ran away from all. When he got to Bethel, he lay down to sleep. God still revealed himself to him. And God said, I will bless you. A thief. A thief. And God said, in blessing, I will bless you. But the man was a thief. Amen. Aren't you surprised? Paul only make an unlawful sacrifice. David killed a man. David fall into adultery. And yet God said, this is a man after my own heart. How do you explain that? How do you explain that? Grace. Grace. So irrespective of what you are doing, you want to maintain your staff, then you live a holy life. When you live a life pleasing to God, things will fall in place naturally. Even when you don't pray. Joseph didn't locate purpose. Purpose located Joseph. David didn't locate purpose. Purpose located David. Nehemiah didn't locate purpose. Purpose located Nehemiah. Jeremiah didn't locate purpose. Purpose located them. Purpose located all these men because they live a life pleasing to God. So purpose came to them himself. So when your life is pleasing, purpose will come to you naturally. You won't need to look for purpose. Are you with me now? Let's be on our feet as we take this last scripture. On our feet. The last scripture now on our feet as we take the last scripture on our feet. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Can we all open the scripture? Everyone of us. Let's open our scriptures. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Can we have verse 13? Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians 4, chapter. Now, can we chorus it together? I can do all things through Christ. We trust in it. Ah, do you know what that means? In other words, nothing can stop you. What did I say? Nothing. Understand this today that you can do all things. What did I say? Oh, you can do all. Don't let somebody look down you and say, Ah, kilo, ah but you can what? You can do it. Chorus it again. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can. As from today, let your word for me. I what? I can. I can. 
Don't ever let anybody say you cannot. You can. The richest man, you can. I with men now. The best consultant, you can. The best architect, you can. The best programmer, you can. The best singer, you can. Anything, you can be the best. Have it at the back of your mind. That you have the capacity to be the best. You have the capacity to get to the greatest height. You have the capacity to fulfill your destiny. That capacity is on your inside. And as from today, it will spring forth in the mighty name of Jesus. It will spring forth in the name of Jesus. It will spring forth in the name of Jesus. You are fulfilling destiny in the name of Jesus. You are fulfilling visions in the name of Jesus. You are fulfilling greatness in the name of Jesus. You are fulfilling dreams in the name of Jesus. You are manifesting the grace of God in the name of Jesus. You are walking on the wings of the eagles in the name of Jesus. You are moving on the wings of the wings you are in the name of Jesus. You are moving on the wings of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. The grace is sufficient for you in the name of Jesus. Let's use our hands of the heaven. Holy are you Lord of Fulfillment. 
Father, release unto me now the key to the fulfillment of my destiny. Father, release it now. The key to the fulfillment of my destiny. Father, release unto me now. There are keys to the fulfillment of a man's destiny. Ask for the key now. Ask for the key. Father, release the key, Lord. Release the key. The platform that I need. The platform that I need to fulfill destiny. There is a platform. There is a platform for destiny to be fulfilled. The platform that I need for my destiny to be fulfilled. The platform of David was the case of Goliath with the king of Israel. Was the case of Goliath and the armies of Israel. That is the platform. The platform for Joseph was the dream of Pharaoh and the interpretation of the dream. There is always a platform for the fulfillment of destiny. Pray to God. Father, the platform that I need for my destiny to be fulfilled. Father, grant unto me, Lord. Grant me the platform, Lord. The platform that I need for my destiny to be fulfilled. Father, grant me the platform this day. In the name of Jesus. There is a platform. Pray to God. Pray to God. Pray to God. The scripture says, whatever you ask in the name of Jesus, God will do. Pray to God. The platform that I need for my destiny to be fulfilled. Father, release unto me. Release the platform today. In the name of Jesus. The platform that I need for fulfilling of destiny. Father, release the platform. Father, release the platform. Pray to God. Father, bear me on the eagle's wings. Father, bear me, carry me on the eagle's wings. Just like you carry the children of Israel on the eagle's wings. Right from Egypt to Canaan. Father, bear me on your wings. Bear me on your wings to a place of destiny for human. Father, bear me on your wings. Bear me on your wings, Lord. I have no strength of my own. Father, I pray that you bear me on your wings. In the name of Jesus. To the place of my destiny for human. Father, bear me on your wings. Bear me on the wings of the evil. Bear me on the wings of the spirit. To my place of destiny fulfillment. In the name of Jesus. Carry me on your wings, O oh Lord. To my place of destiny fulfillment. In the name of Jesus. Carry me, O oh Lord. Carry me, O oh Lord. Carry me, O oh Lord. And finally, speak to God. Father, I need grace. Finally, I need grace. Let grace be concerning my destiny. Finally, ask for grace, Lord. Grant grace upon my life. Let grace speak concerning my destiny. Let grace speak concerning my dreams. Let grace speak concerning my visions. Let grace, Lord, speak concerning my future. Let grace speak greater things about my life and destiny. Release grace, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your grace be sufficient for me. Let your grace be sufficient for me. Let your grace, Lord, be sufficient for me. Let your grace be sufficient for me, O Lord. Release grace. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let the grace to appreciate God. Return glory to his name. Not of him that will and not of him that run, but of God that show and mercy. Not by power, no man that man should boast. But by my spirit, see the Lord of hosts. Appreciate God for this hour. Return glory to his name. Say thank you to Jesus. Say thank you to the King of Kings. Say thank you to the Lord of Lords. Say thank you to the I am that I am. Say thank you to the ancient of days. Say thank you to the beginning and the end of all things. Say thank you to the one that holds the key that controls the existence of our life. Say thank you to, to him that holds this hour. Say thank you to him that holds the future. Say thank you to Jesus. Say thank you to Jesus. Say thank you to Jesus. Say thank you. Say thank you. 
notre dernier. We just want to say bye bye. Every coven where they are speaking about your destiny. Ni oruko Jesu ina lie be koja. Every enemy that is competing with the destiny of God upon your life. I declare them paralyzed in the name of Jesus. Every power that is standing in the place of your destiny. I declare them uprooted by fire in the name of Jesus. Bobuara to da beri ko fe ku mo ninu. Loruko Jesu Olorun fi na pe jade lonu. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As from today, you will not fall into error in the name of Jesus. The spirit of error will not locate you in the name of Jesus. You will not misplace priority in the name of Jesus. You will locate purpose in the name of Jesus. You fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus. Your ambition will be fulfilled before your own eyes in the name of Jesus. And the name of God upon your life will be glorified. Say thank you to Jesus. Say thank you to Jesus. Say thank you to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. We believe that you are blessed through the message you just listened to. We we'll pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be accepted in His presence. Amen. See you next time. Thank you.